Hi there, and welcome to another Anti-Racism 101. So if you're white and you protested and you wanna know what comes next, this video is an introduction to how to continue to genuinely support Black Lives Mattering in the United States today. I'm gonna to spell it all out. I'm going to talk about how to know where you fall on the lifelong anti-racism learning continuum. Next, I'm gonna talk about the best practices that you should know, and of course, where to go and get educated. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you some simple ways to empower yourself so you can teach other white people. So now that you're aware that there's a problem, it's time to learn. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is list a few very important, significant historical events that are important for everybody to know. If you're not familiar with them, it'll be a good way to gauge where you are with your knowledge about the subject matter. When I started learning, it seemed like the more I learned, the more I had to learn, and it still does. Finding out who you are as a supportive ally is kind of a fluid process and it's never really completed. The following are a few historical events that have shaped our culture of white supremacy in the United States today. Each one of these and a lot of other ones have played a huge role in making it legal to make sure black people did not accumulate wealth to pass on to the next generation. It was absolutely purposeful. Okay, here I go. The Compromise of 1877, uh, the short-lived Reconstruction Era, the Devil's Punch Bowl, redlining on all fronts continuously, Black Codes, Jim Crow, um, the disclaimer in the 13th Amendment, separate but equal, Black Wall Street, the Ku Klux Klan, sundown towns, and I could go on and on. If you're not familiar with some of these and are not sure how to debunk some of the most classic denials of systemic racism, you're in the right place. So here's some best practices, which is just a general way of thinking as you're learning about anti-racism. Number one on the list is to educate yourself in your own racial history. You will not believe some of the history that's been hidden from you. Number two for best practices is to understand that racism and the act of discriminating is a system. So when we talk about racism, we're talking systemic racism. We're not talking about an individual act of racism by a particular person. The system was built to exclude black people. It can't be fixed with a Band-Aid and it must be dismantled and rebuilt for everybody. Number three for best practices, all white people today benefit from the enslavement and continued barbaric oppression that, that started right after emancipation and much of which continues to this very day. Even if your ancestors never owned slaves, we're still benefiting from the wealth that was accumulated in this nation. On the, it was built on the backs of black people, enslaved people. Number four, as a white ally, we must support Black Lives Matter, not lead. We have to remind ourselves that it's not about us. And the reason I bring this up is because as white folks and passionate white people who do care, we want to, you know, help and we want to be in on the solution. But part of the problem is we don't know more about how to solve centuries of the brutal oppression to our fellow humans than the actual people living it today. So we kind of have to humble ourselves. Um, you may have an opinion about certain things, but as a white ally, we got to stay in our lane. We're here to learn, to educate other white people, and to support the voices of numerically marginalized people. Best practice number five. Remember that atrocities started up again immediately after emancipation, and they were legal, and they were purposely done to keep black people in their place as second, third, fourth, 20th class citizens. Even when white folks did do illegal acts because of some laws, they were almost never given meaningful consequences. It was pretty much a free for all. Black people have had a long and brutal history of abuse physically and mentally by white folks, which leads me to the next thing, number six best practice. Do not expect to be trusted by most Black people. You may have done nothing wrong, but collectively, white people have historically not earned the trust. It's not your fault. It's just a fact. Best practice number seven. Always remember that this is a journey and you're going to make mistakes in learning, especially if you're really caring and thoughtful and delve really deep and have some introspection about how you've been raised, about society and how you feel about things. Please forgive yourself, you're learning. You gotta just try to learn from it and move on because you're gonna make mistakes. 
you will be surprised at how incredibly forgiving people will be when they know you're genuinely trying to understand. I've, I'm speaking from experience. I have been humbled so many ways with people who have every single right in the world to not trust one single thing I do or say, but they sat there in bed with me and now we're really close friends. Best practice number eight, black people and brown people and African-American people and other people of color are not a monolith. You will meet people who love you, what you're trying to do once you're educated and those that hate you and most people will be somewhere in between. Best practice number nine. This best practice I'm gonna cover now is probably the most important and that is to listen. Listen to black voices, Listen to black people when they talk. Listen to African-Americans, listen to brown people, indigenous people, and other people of color. They will tell you their stories. And when they talk to us about racism, that is a hint to listen. Because when someone shares their innermost feelings, it is a gift. I mean, it's emotional. This is traumatic for most folks who are not white because they've had to deal with this in every single walk of life. So always keep in mind one other thing. It is not the responsibility of black people to educate us. This is why white folks need to learn cultural competency, anti-racism, and our real racial history, and then teach other white people. You will find so many folks along the way who will help you learn, but it's not their responsibility to provide the emotional work. Please remember, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to care. And the fact that you're here means you already do. Before you know it, you will be a pro at anti-racism and it will be a part of your lifestyle and you'll be very confident in educating other white people because that's the goal. The more white folks who understand our real racial history and the facts, the better because we know it's not coming from the top down. It's going to have to be grassroots bottom up and we can already see that happening with the protests. So if you went to a protest and you truly cared, you're doing a great thing. This has been going on for centuries and anybody who is close friends with any black people know it is barbaric and it's inhumane and it's un-American. I want, I don't know about you, but I want liberty and justice for all to actually mean something and not just be empty, empty words. If this all sounds a bit overwhelming, you don't have to do this all at once. If you have almost no time because you're working really hard, paying your mortgage, rent, or just making ends meet so you can feed your kids, the number one thing you can do that will not take very much time is to find your voice. How you do that is by learning. There's about 20 to 30 basic common cliches that deny racism that folks that are uneducated in this area often use and cite, you know, to be in denial of systemic racism. If you learn those and how to debunk them, you are in the top 1% of white folks already. You can learn some simple definitions, and keywords, and once you become confident and you truly buy into it and believe it, you're already ready to educate. You don't have to know everything and you'll do great. Remember, becoming an ally is a rather humbling experience, but it is so worth it. So where should you go to get educated? You might be wondering. The easiest thing to do, I think, is to find a teacher or mentor and follow their program or their videos or you know whatever they have available as curriculum. I run social media platforms geared towards absolute beginners as well as seasoned experts. If you want resources, I'll list my resources and the resources of other people in the description area under this video. I will list some good books in the descriptions that I recommend and I will list some other resources that you might be interested in. Learning our real racial history and how to sincerely support Black Americans will take some effort. I can honestly say from personal experience, it is so worth it on so many levels, I can't even tell you. So thanks for joining me in this latest episode of Anti-Racism 101. I want to know what you think.